And now for yet another water-based, state-of-the-art technology. Using 2D and 3D imaging, side-scan sonar uses light in the form of a pulsed laser to measure ranges. These light pulses, combined with other data recorded by the airborne system, generate precise, three-dimensional information about the targeted area. TVA has invested in the technology to inspect their dams. And what is technology if it doesn't do things better and hopefully cheaper? The device, descended on a cord from a small boat, can take 2D and 3D images of the dams to find any problems that may need fixing. Here at Melton Hill Dam in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, what would typically take divers a week to inspect is now being done in one day. All right, Scott, so you have me out here on this boat today. I'm seeing all this fancy, cool equipment in front of me. What, what are you taking me to do today? What's going on? Well, all this, this boat and all, all this equipment that's on it is really built and constructed to go out and do side scan sonar uh, at our dams. Okay, and why that, is that important? And that's important because we want to see what's uh, under the water on the upstream side as well as the downstream side uh, of each dam. And, you know, we have a good inspection program. We look at the upstream pretty carefully. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, in the past, we didn't have a really good way of doing below the water level. So. Okay. Um, so this tool allows us to get a really good visual and we have computer programs to put all the, the information that we collect together. Mm -hmm. almost looks like a photograph when you're looking underneath okay. the water, almost like there's no water. Yeah. Right? And if we do see a problem, a lot of times we'll send our uh, remote operated vehicle, we, we call it ROV. Mm -hmm. uh, we can send that down to go look at it closer uh -huh. or we might send this device, there's a tripod, we can set it on and, and really drop it in the water and get a really better scan of mm -hmm. that area and really you know, research yeah. it in detail uh -huh. uh, to figure out what's going on. And so so is it an issue of like uh, like too much sedimentation, like building up down there? Uh, or it can like be what? at times. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times you can get a lot of trash in the trash racks, which could impede the uh, performance of yeah. the uh, generation of the unit. And so we'd have to bring mm -hmm. in cranes and clam buckets to, to pull, pull that the out. Trash out. So I get, uh, I get the vibe that prevention is like really key here. Yeah, and that's exactly. kind of what's going on. And you have uh, like some of the top of the line technology, right? As far as yeah. like sonar technology goes for you to check yeah. everything out. Yes, we do. So mm -hmm. what we recently purchased is a high resolution photography camera that really takes detailed, from far away, we can mm -hmm. take detailed pictures of all our dams and piece it together. Technology has come a long way. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it's amazing. So it's amazing where it can go, too. I mean, this is probably just the start of it. Yeah. You know, we can't imagine what's going to be out there next. But. I never really thought about, like, how do you guys, like, check the dam and, and why do you check it and what do you check it for? But when you were mentioning about, like, you know, just, like, the trashway and water going through there and you want to keep that clear because you want more water to go through, generate more power, it's more efficient, and all that stuff's really important. We often say, yeah, you can't generate power if you don't have a dam. Yeah. So if the dam's gone, you know, it's, you know, you, so you got it's important that we also have a dam safety program to yeah. make sure the rest of it's still going to stay there. Well, I'm so thankful that you let me come out here today. I think this stuff's really interesting. I love learning new things, so I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, well, sure, no problem. Yeah, I'll come, come back, back anytime. And then yeah. we'll go mountain biking. All right, all right that all sounds right. good. Right. <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for coming. <laughs> now let's see this technology in action. So you got me out here on this boat. I'm not sure what I'm doing. So walk me through what's going on here, because I'm interested on your what's going on your screen here. Of course, today what we're doing is basically uh, our standard upstream face as well as trash rack inspection. So okay. we're going to be looking at the upstream face of this concrete dam here at uh -huh. Melton Hill. We're going to be looking for any areas where we may have some concrete that may have spalled off. Okay. And we're going to be looking at the sediment load on the upstream face of the dam so that we can kind of see if there's been any sediment that's been pushed up towards the dam itself. Why is that important? Is it bad if a lot of sediment gets up there or? It's not necessarily bad, it's just good to keep an eye on. It's okay. one of the uh, the load cases on, uh, you know, basically all the forces that are affecting the dam. You're mm -hmm. not just holding back water at that point, it's water and some soil with it. So uh -huh. it just kind of changes the calculations when you're looking at the load cases on, on the dam itself. Okay. Uh, one of the other things we're going to be looking at is the trash racks for mm -hmm. the intakes for the generating units. Those are basically just a, a wire or a, a metal mesh of bars that are vertical mm -hmm. and horizontal in a, in a cross pattern. And they keep any kind of floating debris, whether it's logs or that like sort of thing, from going into the unit itself and damaging it. Gotcha. So uh, it's kind of that first barrier uh -huh. to keep anything from coming in so that you okay. just have water going through the units. So uh, being in a marine environment, you know, we're going to be looking for any kind of missing or broken bars mm -hmm. or uh, 
any areas where we may have uh, vegetation or trees or any other type of yeah. debris that are blocking those, uh, you really want to keep as much open space going into that unit as possible because the, the more flow, the more energy you're going to produce. Okay. So if something is, I guess, bad or, or incorrect, how does it appear on the screen? Like, how would I know what to be looking for? Well, as soon as we get a little bit farther up here, we'll actually be able to see into the units. Okay. Uh, so in the case of these trash racks, you'll be able to see these horizontal lines going across the screen. Okay. And as long as those are in nice, even spaces, that's mm -hmm. one way that we can tell that everything's there, okay. that's where it needs to be. All right. And as long as we can see back into the unit, mm -hmm. that also tells us that there's nothing in the way or blocking that, so that there's not any debris in, okay. on the face. So this is where we can see each of these units here at Melton Hill have three slots. Yes. And this is actually the curvature of the back side or the downstream mm -hmm. side of the unit. And this is actually the, um, the so. center area of where the the turbine itself is uh, rotating. Okay. So the more clear picture you can get, the everything's pretty much how it's supposed to be down there, right? Nothing's blocking it and nothing's in the way. Or... Correct. Yeah. And, and by utilizing this boat-based sonar as opposed to the way we had traditionally done it, using remote operated vehicles or the little mm -hmm. uh, submarines with yeah. sonar on them, we can actually conduct these type of inspections and not be in interference with the generating schedule. Okay. So um, if we were to have a, a separate vehicle that was mm -hmm. out, uh, with these units running, it would actually suck that vehicle into the trash rack, okay. where we actually have the ability to stay away from that. So gotcha. it's a, a safer, more mm -hmm. efficient way of actually doing a lot of the inspections Probably. that we've been doing in the past. Is it more cost effective, I would think? It is. Yeah. So you said, like, before, if you would have sent the little, like, submarine thing down, you would have had to turn the generators off. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And um, it would suck it right up. Correct. Okay. And here at Mountain Hill, where we have two units, uh, both of them would actually both have to be in outage because the amount of water flowing mm -hmm. through either of those two units would have affected the ability to control the remote operated vehicle. Okay. So this way, you don't have to shut those generators That's off. That's correct. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if we see something that we need to take a further look at, then that's when we'll contact the plant and okay. we'll schedule another inspection in the more traditional way that we've done in the past. Gotcha. When you go inspect, is that when you send the divers down to inspect or...? Uh, but the, can't, like... Actually, the next step here would just be the remotely operated vehicle oh, because okay. it has uh, both uh, sonar and camera capabilities. So we'd mm. be able to take a, a look visually at anything that we thought might be um, uh, an issue. Okay. And then at that point, if it actually needs something where you get hands on, then the divers gotcha. would be the next step. Okay. Smart guys, smart technology, and up next are some smart kids.